Good morning, everybody, and welcome to episode 24, mm -mm, 34, if I don't get it right, 34 of Daisy Knits. We're hanging out together this morning in the floor of my craft area. So you have a wheel. That bag is my bag of minis. Every time I get minis, I just fill it, throw it in that bag, and eventually I do something with it, like make a crazy shawl or another blanket or something like that. But that's what that is. That's a basket of just random things. That's a partial project bag. Lots of all kinds of things behind me. But we didn't come to talk about that. We came to talk about knitting. Let's get to business, shall we? I have some finished objects. I have a pair of socks. Like, I need to photograph them, but they're done. And really, I wasn't even trying to match up my colors or match up my stripes. And they're off a little bit, but not too bad. Like, not too bad at all. Ironically, they fit my son. They were for him, yes. But they fit me, and they fit him. So they're about half an inch too long right now. There's a lot of leeway for his little foot. But um, he's nine, he's gonna keep growing. So I told him when he outgrows them, they get to be my socks. But he's very excited. You can see my little ladder from where I did them on DPNs. Um, I have not washed these, blocked them, or I don't block socks to be honest. I, I just don't, they're not lace, they don't really need it to me. But they are finished, two socks. He wanted a rolled brim. I ended up doing a traditional heel flap. I'll show you. Since I talked about this so much last week, I probably should tell you what I did. I ended up doing a traditional heel flap. I did an eye of partridge heel. I did the Dutch heel turn because that's my preferred one. And just a regular gusset out. I'm sorry, I'm paying attention a little bit. I've got munchkins outside running all around. So occasionally you see like this big whoosh out of the corner of my eye and I want to make sure it's just a child running. But you you never know. So, I have an F.O. Go me. So those are done. I will actually give them to him. He has seen them. He tried the first one on and then I made him give it back because he will run around with one sock on if I didn't make him give it back to me. So, I did not tell y'all last week what the yarn was. I don't think maybe I did. Anyways, it is some that I was blessed with at Knitting in the Mitten. The colorway is 1776 and Fortissima color, color, Saka color. I ended up actually using about 56 grams. So I used more than half, but not much more. I have a nice healthy chunk here. I'm wondering, because I did make these long enough, I'm kind of wondering if I can't make um, a pair of roll sit. Roll, roll City Rollers out of the leftovers for me. I'm kind of wondering if I can't squeeze out a pair of those for me and maybe doing the toe in just a solid white or even the heels and toes in a solid white if I get close. I might ball line this up and then do them concurrent because they are it's a freebie pattern. You start cuff down. It has the rolled brim, just a little bit of a brim. You go right into the heel. So I'm kind of considering that. And if I remember right, for the Just One More Row podcast, Sock Knit Along, the yearly Sock Knit Along, August is ankle socks. Roll City Rollers would work, and I haven't knit that pattern yet. So that might be what happens to this. I got a few months to figure that out. So, anyways, the only other thing I have going is I have Jimbo here. This is a monster creation that I told you all about. It was rolling around in my brain and I needed it out. So, you know, I was... Actually, I don't even know where I was last week. I was down here in the body last week. I put some stuffing in it. So he's like all funky. He's got stuffing in there. So he looks all weird right now and lumpy. Um, but I've started the decreases on his head. And... I'm going to play around a bit with hit the top of his head. I know kind of what I want to do. I have about four different ideas. And I'm going to see which one actually works for Jimbo here. And then I have arms and legs. And 
I didn't bring his his bags way over there. I have buttons actually that I'm going to use on him. So I have ideas. He's starting to grow and show up. So that's what's going on with poor little Jimbo here. He's not little, big Jimbo. Um, <laughs> that's what's going on with him. Okay, so, and I actually did some master knitter work this week. It's not a lot. I'm not happy with it, to be honest, but I did some buttonholes. So let's see, we had uh, three different buttonholes. You were supposed to do them on a one by one rib, um, but you pick which buttonhole you want. And I'm not thrilled with part of these buttonholes, to be honest. So I will be definitely redoing this, but it's a live and learn experience. So I know what I don't like. I learned a few things I want to do differently, how I want to execute them a little bit better. But I have a buttonhole sample swatch. So that's what's going on with my master knitter this week. Um, as far as spinning goes, I haven't actually spun because I was playing around with the fiber. It's living in this little recyclable Joann's bag. I purchased a bat, and actually let me go see. I purchased a bat when I was at um, Knitting Pipeline Retreat. And it was from Joanna Springs Knit Spin Farm. And all her information's on there. And it's one of those kind of like kitchen sink bats. It has BFL, Falkland, Merino, Polworth, Sari Silk, Silk Noils, Targi, and Shetland. And it's not quite three ounces. And she called it Raspberry Canes. I just, I stared at this bat the whole time I was in the market. She was right beside me and I kept looking at it. And I would look at it. And I would look at it. And then at the end, it was still there. So I felt like... Fates had said you need to come take me home. So what I did was I opened this bat up and it was a big flat, big bat. And I kind of stripped it down just a little bit so it would be a little bit more um, friendlier for my hands. So you can see, like here's some silk noils here and there's some of this sorry silk right there. And now that I've done this, I'm a little bit intimidated to be honest. I've never spun anything with so much texture. So I, I'm a little scared. To be honest, but it smells so good too. It still smells sheepy to me. So, um, I, I'm just, I've, I've talked myself out of it cause I'm scared I'll screw it up and I just need to do it. But I stripped it, like I said, I stripped it down. So it's a little bit more to me manageable. And I will be playing with that on my e spinner sitting right there. Now I have fiber in my mouth, sorry. So, that's pretty much what all I've been doing this week. Um, the only other thing I have to share with y'all is fiber use coming up. For those of you that you're local, go check it out. If not, I totally understand. The shop will be there. I am working on dyeing up a lot of fiber over the next two weeks, just so I can be ready for fiber you. And I'm probably not going to list that in the shop until after I come back. So, but I am working on dyeing a lot of that up and I can show y'all as it comes out of the dye pot and dries and stuff. I'm playing with some new fun things and playing with sprinkling. Ooh, it's fun. So that's what I have to share with you all guys today. I hope that you've had a great week. I'd love to see what all you're up to. So come over in the group and chat. Let us know what you've been working on and I will see y'all next week. See ya.